Chilling by the fireside Makes everything alright Makes everything alright Tonight I'ma make a change I won't be the same It's the word that changes life It's the word that changes Yeah, it's green tea. I prefer loose leaf though because it really brings out the aromas on my palate, you know. But this will do. Justin, we're live. <clears throat> Hi everyone. Welcome to Fireside Thoughts with Justin Minot. You have officially made it to episode three, and so I would like to congratulate you. You should probably give yourself a pat on the back at this point. Before we move on though, I'd like to point out a few very important things. One we have a real fireplace here. Um, big upgrade for us here on the set of Fireside Thoughts, and we're really excited about that. Two, something that I'm just more so personally excited about because I love it, is my new robe. It might not look any different to you, but it is new. It's the same color, just made out of a really new material. Sheds a bit, but it's really comfortable, so I would recommend it. I think it's 100% polyester. All right, so without further ado, please find yourself your Bible, Get yourself some tea, loose leaf, or in a bag, whichever your preference is. Sit back, relax, and enjoy Fireside Thoughts with your host, Justin Minot. All right, boys and girls, now it's time for one of my favorite parts of every episode. It is time for Turn the Heat Up! This evening, we're going to be turning the heat up on a serious issue that's affecting families and individuals across our nation and even across the world. It's a drug that's been spreading rapidly. I'm not quite sure where it originated, but I do know this. I know that its consequences are very severe. This drug is called hand sanitizer. I just don't understand the point of hand sanitizer. And you're supposed to be using it after you wash your hands. First of all, people are coming up with ridiculous ways that you're supposed to be washing your hands nowadays. You're supposed to pump the paper towel, then you're supposed to start the sink, Rinse your hands a little bit, get some soap on your hands, then you sing the whole alphabet, hopefully in your head, because it would be kind of weird if you did it out loud, but you're supposed to wash your hands for the whole length of the alphabet, then you rinse it off, then you grab your paper towel, turn the sink off with your paper towel so you don't get any sink germs on your hands, and then you open the door with your paper towel, and then throw the paper towel in the garbage after you go out the door so you don't get any door germs on your hands. And after all of this, people will go and use hand sanitizer. They're using hand sanitizer for everything. You touch something, you use hand sanitizer. Your baby's crying, you put hand sanitizer on it. Hand sanitizer everywhere, it doesn't make sense. Look, when I was a kid, I played outside, I drank water from the hose, I played in the dirt, then I came in, I maybe washed my hands, and after that I would eat my food, and look, I turned out just fine. Don't comment on that, I don't wanna hear about that. But anyway, these kids, they're not even playing outside anymore, and that's why we have all these kids that are running around overweight. Well, they're not even running around, actually. There's no pun intended at all, because they're not running. These kids are overweight, probably because of hand sanitizer. They don't go outside because of hand sanitizer. Kids are overweight. Hand sanitizer may be the direct cause of childhood obesity, if we're being honest with ourselves. It's a big issue. And hand sanitizer creates all these super germs and super bugs, and so... That could lead to who knows what. That could lead to those silly zombie attacks, which, what is the point of all these zombie attacks and this whole obsession with the zombie apocalypse and, ooh, how long would you last in a zombie apocalypse? Stop it. Doesn't make any sense. But if there was a zombie apocalypse, you know what would cause it? Hand sanitizer. Nasty. Wow. I really didn't expect to be going on such a long lion trail on that one. I don't call it a rabbit trail, if you were wondering. I call it a lion trail because I'm not a rabbit. A lion trail, it's fierce, Arr, you know? Anyway, let's move on to the good stuff. We're gonna be talking about when life gets tough or when life gets dark. I think a lot of times people think that when things are hard or when life gets dark, that they're doing something wrong. And I mean, there are times when we're walking in the wrong direction and things get tough or where we've been disobedient, walking away from God and 
life gets hard for that reason. But I think there are also times when life's hard because you're doing something right. I find it interesting that a seed actually begins the first part of its existence in darkness. And out of that, it grows. But it has to start in that dark place in order for it to grow. The stars, we can't see them until it's dark. And I think in our lives, there are times where we can't appreciate things until we see the contrast with something else. I love what David says in Psalm 23. He says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. He's talking about God. And I find it fascinating that he doesn't say I'm going to fear no evil because the valley is going to get brighter or because roses and daisies are going to pop up beside me while I walk through it. The valley stays dark. The valley's still scary. It's still dangerous. But he says, I'm going to fear no evil because you are with me. Just the presence of God alone. Now, you know how much I love stories. So I want to share a story about a group of scientists that were doing experiments on butterflies. What they did is they divided the cocoons into two separate groups. All these cocoons were mature. They were ready to go. The butterflies were fully mature inside the cocoon. And so for the first group, what the scientists did is when the butterflies were fully ready inside the cocoon, they opened the cocoon for the butterflies. So this group of butterflies, they take off really fast. They fly around. They flap their little butterfly wings. And after about an hour, each and every one of them dropped to the ground and died. The second group, the scientists just observed as the butterflies came out of the cocoon on their own. And I mean, coming out of a cocoon is a terribly hard thing. You have to scratch. You have to claw. You have to bite your way out. It's exhausting. You have to fight for everything that you get. This second group of butterflies, when they came out, they took off a little slower. They were a little more tired. But each and every one of those butterflies lived its proper lifespan. The struggle is necessary in order to get to the top and stay to the top of where God has you. Let's go to the Word. Now I can't go a whole episode without getting into my Bible. Seems delicious. Ask Moses, he'll tell you. Deuteronomy 8, 3. Read it for yourself. All right, we're going to James chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. It's in the New Testament. Probably want to get there yourself in your Bible so you can see that it's actually there. This is good stuff. James chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. Consider it pure joy whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Now, I don't know about you, but it's not that easy to consider it pure joy when you're in the middle of a trial, but it's saying that it develops perseverance. And perseverance makes it so that you lack nothing. You're mature and complete. The butterfly, without the struggle, wouldn't have even been able to reach a part of its potential. It wouldn't have been able to be what it was designed to be. And actually, without the darkness that came before that, getting into the cocoon, it would still be crawling around on its stomach, not even close. And so the struggle, some people will say that the struggle just makes you stronger. I think it's necessary in order for you to thrive and be all that you were destined to be. You need the struggle in order to succeed. That's all I have for you tonight. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the work that you're doing in our lives. We thank you for the struggle. We consider it joy when we're in a trial because we know that you have a bigger plan for us. You want to take us to places of influence far beyond where we ever dreamed for ourselves. Help us to remain joyful in the struggle and to recognize the necessity of the dark times for your purpose and for your glory. In Jesus' name, I pray all these things. Amen. Well, thank you so much for tuning in again. Look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Fireside Thoughts with Justin Minot. And never forget that I love you and that God loves you way more than that.